That'll do it for that bout, folks. And we've got one more 64-kilogram bout here in this morning session. It's the eighth bout, and it is between Iran and Mongolia. Mehdi Talut the Banpi making his way to the ring right now. to the red corner followed by the blue corner from Mongolia he is Monk Erdin Uranchime Uranchime 29 years old Rene Just by the way from Slovakia is the referee The judges, as you see, Malicia Butar, Putashidis, Germain, and Pizarro for this light welterweight contest. Munker Dean, 29 years old, 174 centimeters tall. He's from Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. He boxes for the Kangard Boxing Club, and he brings with him a wealth of experience as well. He was a 2008 Olympian in Beijing, placed seventh with a loss at the 64 kilogram weight class to Alexis Vastine of France. That was a 12-4 loss in the quarterfinals. So close, close he came. He's gonna try and get even closer in London if he could get through this bout right here. He was a 2009 bronze medalist at the Aiba World Championships in Milan. He's also a member of the World Series of Boxing where he lost to the Mexican Juan Pablo Romero in the first round in 2010. First place in the Mongolian National Championships this year and second place in the Felix Stamm Tournament in Warsaw. And last but not least, he grabbed the gold earlier this year in the Asian Championships in Incheon with a win against Park sang Hyuk, 21 to eight in the final. So here you have it, Monk Erdin is in the blue corner and Mehdi is in the red corner. Mehdi from Iran, Munker Dean from Mongolia. Monk now, the taller boxer, starting to feel his men out. We're a minute into this first round. And Mehdi trying to figure out a way to score. He hasn't really let his hands go just yet. There he starts to let him go, and a little rough housing in the center of the ring, and down goes Mehdi. Referee Rene Just is going to instruct Mehdi to wipe his hands, and he's going to also caution Monk to be careful on the throws and the roughhousing tactics. Monk's been to this dance before. He knows what it's like. He's got all the tricks up his sleeves and he's got fast hands. You can see he's able to score with those lead right hands. He's boxing in the southpaw style to Mehdi's orthodox style. Monk very light on his feet, very active with his hands. He's got a nice stiff jab. He's willing to throw it both to the chest and to the head, which is nice. Nice to see the uh, assortment of punches and the assortment of locations for which he's throwing them. And there's a nice right hand by Mehdi. Looks like it scored on the chin. Mehdi continues to lunge forward and tries to press the action. on his toes, he's, he's light, he's got good reflexes, he's got long arms, and he knows how to commit to those punches. You can tell he's throwing them with authority. I'd like to see more combinations from Monk. He seems like he has the capability to score if he wants to. He should be throwing more combinations, it would seem. He lands a sloppy right there, and here comes Mehdi, seeming to chase him around the ring. Never a good style for the boxer that's
being chased. You always want to be the chasee rather than the chaseor. The chasee has more time to think. The chasee has more time to, to know what's going to happen. Why? Because he's the one that's leading the action. Even though he's on the defensive, it would seem, when he's retreating, he could choose to retreat and turn left. He could choose to retreat and circle right. As a result, he knows where he's going to be a second before he's there. Whereas the chaseor doesn't know where the chase he's going to be. He just has to continue to chase and chase and turn and turn, never really being able to plant his feet, never being able to really get his action going. And as you can see after round one, it's eight to four. Monk over Mehdi, Mongolia over Iran. Again, the uh, Irani boxer, instead of chasing Monk down, would be better served to, to be more, more thoughtful in his attack. To just chase Monk down willy-nilly is going to make for an easy matchup for Monk. Instead, why not slow it down a little bit? Force Monk to bring the action to him. Maybe rely on some counter punching. See if he can't somehow cut off the ring instead of just bull rushing Monk and chasing him down. Be that as it may, eight to four, Monk Erdeen after one round. Here comes Monk again. Light on his toes. Nice stiff right hand followed by a left. That's a good combination by Monk. And there's a left to the body, another great punch. He sees how that's a loose guard being employed by Mehdi, and he's taking full advantage of it here in round number two. This is Castle Chalice calling the action from ringside here at the 16th World Championships of the IEBA boxing tournament known as the gateway to the 2012 London Olympics. Those that progress past this round earn themselves a spot, a ticket, round trip to London. Hopefully that's a full stay and not a, a shortened trip. They want to get there and they want to make it to the highest platform. They want their flag to be raised high and bring that gold medal back to that country. Monk is hopeful that he's going to get another shot at that. Again, he was a 2008 Olympian. He knows what it's like to be on this stage. I'd like to see him being a little more active. He's choosing his punches carefully, or perhaps too carefully. It would seem that he could do what he wants here in the ring with the Iranian boxer at this point. He's got a lot more tools at his disposal, a lot more experience to rely upon. The Iranian is not going away easily, though. He's showing some good heart, showing some good confidence, not throwing enough punches, and perhaps even a little perplexed at this point as round two winds down. Referee Renee just going to issue a caution to Mehdi. And now he's going to let boxing resume here with just 30 seconds left in the, the second round. And as Mon continues to press the action, definitely the more effective aggressor is Monk Erdine. There's a right hand misses, lunges forward with a left, falls short as well, and there he's able to snap a right hand in. Looks like it spun Mehdi. Maybe not did too much damage, but enough to, to phase him, just for a brief moment at least. And that's it, folks. That is round number two in the books. And the Mongolian boxer will most likely pull away even further from the lead he had going into round number two. We look at some replay action from that last round, and you can see Monk just really the busier boxer, both hands firing on, full, uh, on, on both cylinders, rather. And um, there's a left to the body. That was a nice, quick body shot that no doubt scored good points for him. And 
you see him in the corner there, sort of recharging the battery. And it's a 9-2 round for Munker Dean, making the total 17 to 6. That's a deficit of monstrous proportions for young Medi here because 11 points down in the third round of a world championship bout when your opponent is a former world uh, excuse me, a, a former world championship participant. He's a former Olympic boxing participant. And he's the ultimate stylist with lots of confidence and lots of experience. And Mehdi is going to really have his work cut out for him. Again, you know, it's not impossible. Being down on points is not the end of the bout. Because in boxing, as we know, one punch can change that. One huge shot can send Monk to the canvas from which he may not return. However, Medi's going to have to really figure out a way to land that punch. It's not going to be easy. He needs to, he needs to push. It would, it would seem like he needs to push Medi around a little bit, but he can't just push him around. He needs to push him around with one goal in mind, and that's to land the big shot. He was the aggressor perhaps in round one, bull rushing. Monk. In round two, it started to even out, and now it looks like in round three, Medi is the one who's more on the defensive, and Monk is just dancing his way to victory here. I say boxing is like ballet, except there's no choreography, and the dancers are getting hit, and that's what Monk is making this look like right now. Russia. Nice right hand down the pipe by Medi. Minute and a half to go in this third round. Again, we'd like to commend Aiba and the Azerbaijani Boxing Federation for putting on a wonderful performance here. This is a this is a tournament of tremendous, tremendous organizational detail. And they've done a wonderful job, Yeoman's work. This arena is going to start to fill up as the event goes on, and it's going to be at fever pitch capacity, no doubt, come finals time. The Azerbaijanis love their boxing, as do we all. And now it's just a, a cat fight in there as both boxers clawing their way, trying to make it to the finish line. Medi seems to be somewhat somewhat disillusioned at this point. He stopped throwing the punches the way he had been earlier. He stopped charging Monk the way he had been earlier. His hands are starting to drop. He's down a lot of points, and there's a big right hand that, if it landed, may have done some serious damage. However, it seemed to fall short, and at the same time was thrown while being off balance, and as a result, you saw him hit the canvas the way he did, and Monk is too slick to be caught by that trick. Too, too slick to be caught by that punch. And a, a whipping right hand by Medi, but that's just too little too late here as this bout is now in the books, and we shall see in just a moment the official score, but it seems fairly certain at this point that Monk Ardeen did enough in that third round, if not more than enough, to maintain his, his lead and, and thus the victory. Grab the victory with a 24 to 9, a commanding, commanding win for Monk Erdin Urantiamag. And Mongolia will have their boxer in the Olympics, and Monk will go on to the semifinals tomorrow. And good job. You did what you could, did Medi. Just wasn't good enough, not against the caliber of boxers you're going to meet here at the Aiba World Championships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 